There we go, ladies and gentlemen. That, after 16 days of streaming, this was the end of Greedfall. Thank you to everyone that passed by. And as usual, when I'm done a, a game, um, I do give my, my mini review uh, on stream, um, uh, you know, on, off the cuff. Um, and uh, yeah, let's discuss that. All right, so Greetfall. Um, let's go with, let's start with the story. Um, it's a story that um, I didn't think was going to be as, um, as interesting as it was. Um, I knew that it had to do with natives, but to that point where it's, it's very reminiscent. Yeah, yes, there's a, a little bit of a fantastical side of it, but it's actually really fun uh, to see if the natives would have won. And the supernatural aspect of it is really, really cool. Uh, I truly enjoyed it. Um, the fact that you start off with a point of curing something and then you go at the end and, you know... Um, now, I don't think I got the full... There's different endings... Depending on how you get, how you are with the, it depends who you pick as the, the, the um, you pick as the leader of the, the natives and it depends who you pick, but I think I got, I think I got a decent ending. Um, at the end, I'm happy. The natives ended up reclaiming the island and, you know, everything went back to normal. They are one with nature. They, they're healing the earth as it is, is as it is. And it's really, really cool. It's really fun. Um, so for that, uh, kudos. Um, the voice acting of this game is actually, for the most part, not too bad. Um, it's pretty good. I'm talking about the voice acting. I'm not talking about the graphical, you, uh, you know, the, the, the CGI about the, the, the lips moving. Because that's a little bit wonky, wonky but the actual... The actual voices themselves are really well done. Um, the guy that voices um, the Legget is really, really good. I believed him. He had that voice that really suited him to be the type of character that he becomes. Um, a del uh, you know, a, a, a somebody that's a delegate, and that that's uh, he has that voice that could put people at ease, um, which is good. So I really, really like that. Uh, my companions, pretty much, for the most part, are pretty good. The one thing I'm going to say that is is a bit of a disappointment is the, the caricatures of the characters. Uh, the caricature of who Petrus was um, kind of went all the way to, you know, at one point, that's all, the, you were saying the same character like eight times. Like, seriously, <laughs> get over it. Um... So I, I don't understand why they were doing that, but uh, I guess for time or to save money. So for the most part, all the caricatures kind of repeat themselves, um, other than the main the main cast. <laughs> like I didn't see the same thing for Siora, the Legate, as well. Petrus I did see repeat. Um, even Vasco and Kurt I didn't really see them repeated but the lady the women were repeated a lot um so in a span it's similar to it's really the same thing as fallout where fallout uh, fallout 3 in new vegas at one point you see the same type of character with you know the same type of caricature with three different characters that's pretty much what it comes down to um so i was a bit disappointed in that and and it's a game that looks really really good like if you look at the landscapes and you look at the way the cities are built. It's really cool. But they didn't go that extra mile. Um, so every palace looks the same. Every house looks the same. Um, yeah, the town looks slightly different. But everything inside looks the same. So either you go and see Ma Madame Car uh, the Car uh, Admiral, the Cardinal. Uh, Miss Cardinal or whatever her name is. Uh, or you go see, um, you know, uh, the leader of Hikmet. Or you go see anything. Uh, or you go see uh, your cousin Constantine, 
um, it's the same thing. So there, uh, there's a couple of times where I got really m messed, mixed up. And because um, I thought I was in one palace when I was in another. It was more at the beginning of the game, but, you know, I got used to it. But it's still something that got me, that took time to get used to it. At the same, in, by the same token, the traveling in this game is really not ideal. Um, you can travel from one to the other, but what I don't like is on your map, it'll show you, a gl like, the globe is where it's travel points, which, okay, fine. So let's say I have to go to XYZ. It goes to, and this is where I got confused. I, I thought that when you saw the globe with the little, you know, the, the mission icon, I figured that you would have, it was the closest one to wherever you are, to so you can travel to one place. No, it actually points to where the actual mission is, but it doesn't tell you like, oh, you can just go, you know, beside the, the palace into your own quarters and you can travel from there instead of running all the way to the end. And that kind of, I lost a lot of time at the beginning of the game for that. Um, once I got used to how it works, it was fine. There's a few other ways that you can travel. Uh, one of them is through camps. Uh, the other one is through carriage. You know, you can pay money for carriages, but he only bring you to certain spots. So that's a disadvantage. So I'm assuming at the beginning of the game, it's what you used to travel. Towards the end of the game, you don't need it at all. At all. Um, I didn't think you really needed that, to be honest. Um, I think you just needed to... You know, have one travel type of travel point, and it was good. I also wasn't a fan of the fact that when you traveled, there was always an intermediate section where you were able to change your companions and also, like, you know, um, sell your goods, buy new goods, and and fix your your stuff. Which is a bit of a disappointment because if I want to go to the other, just load and just load me when I get to the other place. Um, Again, it's a it's a design choice. It's fine. I'm sure it didn't bother other people. I just, as the game wore on, it was more and more evident that it was annoying. <laughs> At least for me, it got more and more annoying. Um, from the perspective of the technical issue, so like I told you, there were you know the caricatures that were repeating, but. As the game progressed, I noticed that it was chugging along a lot more. I'm playing on an Xbox One S, and it was chugging along towards the end. Not in the beginning as much, but at, towards the end, there were a couple of cutscenes that were really, like, struggling. And I don't know why. I don't know if it's, you know, my particular Xbox that's having an issue, or if it's the game that was built that way. I mean, I played other games recently on that same Xbox, and I had no issue. So, I don't think it's the Xbox per se that's the issue. Um... There's little things here and there where the polish is just not there. It's things like, you know, you can have the subtitles on. Sometimes the subtitles have spelling mistakes in it. Um, also, there's parts of the, the conversation when you have, like, somebody talking and then they say something in, something in a native language. You saw it was a copy and paste because there was extra spaces at the beginning and at the end of the word. For whatever reason it kind of looked weird when you were reading it anyways stuff like that um, you know there were certain things where it, it got it took me a while to get into the game of like how the game works and how the mapping works and that kind of took me out for a while like I, I seriously thought at the beginning that I wasn't going to continue the game only because I thought that it was really really not it evident and the way that I can only can I can compare it somebody on my stream already said that it, they compare it to Dragon Age and I can't really say that because I haven't really played Dragon Age to be honest so I can't really say but um, it felt like the original Assassin's Creed like you when you play um, one two and three or revelations like those types of game that's that's what the gaming felt for this um, so from a technical aspect, it lacked a little bit of polish. Um, and I understand like some reviews have said that. And and for whatever reason, when it's a Fallout game, they get away with it. Forget 76, but everything else before, they kind of got away with it. Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, oh, it's part of the charm. 
Greedfall did the same thing, but they didn't. They didn't. Um, they don't get the same leeway, which is a shame because it's a. It's not a triple A developer. Spider is a double A developer, and you see, it's really something they. It, it, they really developed the story really, really well. And they did a really good story. Just that I think the polish could have been a little bit better um, for the game. Having said that, um, the music is a little bit... is fine. At some points it sounded like um, Star Trek Voyager type music. Uh, which is fine. Um, it didn't. It fit the, the mood and it was fine. It's not as if... It's not one of those games where the soundtrack overpowers the game it's there because it needs to but it does the job like it's nothing any, anything spectacular um the one thing i'm going to say about this game though it does get repetitive uh the side missions there's like maybe two three types and that's it so at any given time that's what it is i still didn't master fully the um, the um the attributes and how the points work like i a couple of times you i i reset my stats because you can do that with a crystal whatever i don't even know how that is but with a crystal you can reset your stats which is fine i've done that a few times because i got stuck and i needed an attribute to be a certain way and that's the thing about this game that i don't necessarily like with the design it penalizes you for not picking the right things and you're kind of forced in some cases to reset your stats and when you reset your stats it's the whole thing you can't just reset your skill points or your attribute points or your other points it's everything so you can't just you know stream do one thing which is a, is a really really big shame um it but again and i'm gonna say i've said this numerous times during the game so overall the story is good i had fun with this game it had some technical issues. It had some. It's not a perfect game, but I said this at the beginning. It's a game that you can build on and make it better. So if they make a Greedfall two, it's something. I don't know if that's the case or if they're gonna make a Greedfall two. They're not even making any DLC for this game, which is a shame. I think I would love to have DLC for this game, but um, it really doesn't. Um, People didn't give it enough of a chance, and I think it has a really, really good base. And if they just fixed and tweak, tweak what was broken in Greedfall, the first one, I think they can have a spectacular second game. Now, I don't know what you would do as a second game, to quite honestly, and I don't know what the conical story would be, um, you know, would the conical be that you killed Constantine or not? Because if you don't kill him, um, if you kill him, everybody, the natives survive. If you don't kill him, everybody dies, essentially. And the island gets rid of everything. And then you have, you have a power trip. But it doesn't feel like something that... Because the ending was kind of weird. Because the Legate, the character that you play, the Legate, uh, the Sarde, um... He's a guy that wants peace. He wants to resolve issues without using excessive force. He only uses his force if he needs to. And at the end, you're kind of like, well, do you want a power trip? Well, no. I, the whole point of the character is not to have a power trip. So it feels a little bit off at the end. If you would choose to not kill Constantine, it would kind of go against everything that you've built towards the full game which I find really, it's a little bit weird. So in the end, you kind of had a choice, but you don't have a choice. Um, I'm sure I'm going to replay it at one point and I'll take the other side of things and I'll try and be better and do, you know, really get the, the story going, but, uh, or get some, some um, bu building up some of the, um, the, the, uh, like the, the the not the xp but the 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 karma that you have with other other factions i'll try and do better at that does it have replayability yes but not right away 
it's not one that you finish the game and you want to go back and you're going to finish like first of all you can't because there's no game plus um so you can't really play I, at least i don't know um as far as i know you can't go back because when you get to the last part of the game it literally tells you you failed everything you didn't complete so there's no way of going back and finishing the game there's replay value but the replay value is not right away like i would wait a couple of years maybe play it again and see where I go and the decisions I make. I'll probably make a different decision as this time and then see how it goes. Um, so yeah, I, I'm uh, I'm uh, I did like this game. Um, I think it it has a lot of potential. I think people didn't give it a fair chance, um, and it's a really big shame. Um, I think this is Spider's best game by far. Yes, it has issues, but they're on the right track, and they had the heart in the right place. And to be honest, the story is kind of unique in a sense. Uh, they went with the native story, um, which you, I find you don't have enough. And it's so intri intriguing. It's something you can do. Like, either you believe, you know, in what the natives, in the real world, what they believe in or not, right? The natives usually, in most countries, believe that they're one with the earth, and they're, they're one... Uh, they believe in the spirits. They believe in a lot of spiritual spiritual stuff. And you can take that to the extreme, which they kind of did that here. They kind of took it to a paranormal state where the earth actually inflicts a disease and stuff. And I don't think it's something that's done quite enough. Yeah, you do the space alien thing and you have like the, you know, you always have the aliens. You always have a, an apocalypse somewhere or future dystopia. Um, but it's rare that you have a story where it really embraces the natives. And to be quite honest, um, there's a lot of stuff that's in here. I, I almost feel as if there was somebody that wrote the story that was affected. Either they were native and they were affected by stuff that was told to them. Because it, it, there was a lot of in the dialogue, there was a lot of stuff where there was a lot of racism between, you know, um, certain clans um, and the sa and and what they called the savages, which were the natives. It, just calling them the savages, which is a racist term. Um, it's funny because a lot of you know, even to this day, at least in Canada, that's people do call natives savages, and it's a shame. But at the same time, you see both sides of the story, and you finally have a character that tries to understand why is it that the natives don't like what they call a Renaxe, which is basically anybody that's not native. And on the other side, why do other factions not like the savages? It's a point of view thing, right? So from one side of the one side of the aisle, you have the knots and the bridge alliance and any other faction that's not native and then they see that there's um, beasts that are controlled by the earth they see that you know there's a malachor they don't they can't explain it and the natives do a lot of stuff that they don't understand so for them it's where the malachor comes from it's where all the problems stem from on the other side of the, the aisle, you have the natives, which think that the, the Renaixe, which is anybody else, are disturbing the earth, and they're the ones causing the issues, like the, the problems. It's really a matter of misunderstanding on both sides, and if they would sit in the middle and understand each other, they would, it would go a long way. And it's one of those things that it makes you open your eyes, and that it's still a thing that's today. And this is a period piece, but it's still something that's relevant today. And it's, it's really something that's, that's, um, that's impressive. And that's why I find that the story was really, really well done. It was a lot better than I thought it would be. I thought it was going to be just a fetch quest. Characters would be stale. To be honest, I didn't really care for most. The only one that I really cared for was Siora. Uh, Petrus, the side missions, I didn't really care for. Kurt, either, I didn't care um vasco was not too bad actually um afro was actually not too bad either um 
but it, for the most part, I did it for the Leggett, and I did it for his part of, like, from his his point of view, and I did it for him. So it's it's, yeah, it's a fun game. Now, would I replay it again? As I mentioned before, would it be something that I play again? Not right away. It's not something I would binge once again. It's not like a, most people play Fallout for months on end. This is not one of those games. You play it, you're done. You put it down, play something else. In a couple of years, you pick it back up and you play it again. I truly enjoyed it. I find that it's a shame there's no DLC. Um, if I had to give a score, which I don't like to, I don't give scores on, on games anymore, uh, really. I would probably give it a 7.5 or 8. Um... It's enjoyable enough. Yes, there's technical issues. Yes, it's not polished. But you know what? People have given other games a pass for what these guys have done. Um, and it's, this game is no worse or no better than any other game of the genre. And I think they did a spectacular game. And I give them kudos for creating a story that's original. And that's not common. So for that, I give them full kudos. And uh, yeah... That's my mini review of Greedfall. Been streaming for four.